Hello everybody, I'm Kathleen Hawkins, your proud president and founder of WOMTECH. I am so excited about today's show. We're going to learn how to fall in love all over again with your, in your relationships, with your life, with your image, and with your business. So we've got a great segment for you today. Thank you all for tuning in. I do want to take a moment and give a big shout out to um, our members and directors in Kansas City, Missouri, um, or in Kansas City and in Missouri because they're in both areas. Um, they had quite a bit of snow and I specifically want to give a shout out to Diane Thompson who was brilliant today. They had a snow day and they conducted their WOMTECH meeting via conference call. So that's the first time that's ever been done. I'm very proud of you for having out of the box thinking because you know that's how we can continue to stay connected in, in cold weather and in warm, you know, in good conditions and in bad. But thank you, thank you, thank you for all and everything that each and every one of you are doing. Um, San Ramon, California. I do want to give you a shout out as well because you were um, our director of the month for the month of January along with um, Laura Wynn, who was also the director of the month for the month of January with the most new and renewing WOMTECH members in the month of January. So um, that's new to you. It hasn't even been officially announced except for, for today's platform. So congratulations for everything that each and every one of you are doing. Um, new State is on the horizon. If you work with a company that has um, upline, downline, sideline, whatever it may be, I want to encourage you to um, put it on your radar that we are launching in Pennsylvania in the next six to eight weeks. So we look forward to connecting with you and um, growing and just working with you as your chapter continues to grow. So Jillian, if you're watching right now, thank you, thank you, thank you for believing in our vision, for keeping our, our dream alive of really working together to empower one another to make a difference and to change and build your community. So we've got a lot of exciting things to share with you, a lot more updates that I'm going to share with you as well, but um, I just can't wait to introduce the next guest. And he's been on the show before. He's an amazing man, a wonderful member, and um, I'm proud to introduce you to Roy Bianca Lana. So thank you, Roy, for being here today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great to be here. Thank You're you. going to teach us how to not be an emotional hot mess sometimes. Right. And strengthen our relationships. Well, you can be a hot mess still, but <laughs> know how to manage that a little bit. Well, yeah, you mentioned love, and I think I wanted to talk about some things that I thought could really inhibit your ability to love your partner, your children, your friends, your clients. And I really think that when we become all locked up with our emotions, whether it's anger, fear, sadness, depression, anxiety, that makes it very difficult to relate, build our businesses, be with our friends. We want to crawl under the bed and put the covers over our head and disappear. So I thought if I could come on and help people be more emotionally intelligent, it would really serve their lives in a big way. Well, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do first mm -hmm. before we get into those details, because I know we do have a lot of emotional messes out there right now. Um, I know I can be an emotional mess from time to time. Me you know, too. I ask myself all the time, what was I thinking when we started a woman's organization? Because <laughs> it can be interesting from time, you know, even though we do have a few good men that help keep us in check Me and do. in balance. But tell everybody who you are and what you do. Oh, I'm a relationship coach, and I work with people who are either single and maybe don't want to be, but they're not able to figure out why they're not attracting the right partners and all that, or people that are in relationships and want to make their relationship get better. So really all things love, intimacy, dating, sexuality, attraction, intimacy, all those things is what I deal with. Okay, well, let's talk for just a minute, and I first want to say that I have um, said this many times, that I have witnessed you helping people from someone that is maybe older that's been widowed or someone that maybe is younger that is just going from relationship to relationship looking for love, and so I know that you do work with people across the board, right. but I think that it's important for us to redefine relationships a little bit because it's right. not just your relate. We automatically think, especially if Valentine's Day coming up, we think of the significant other in our lives right. or you know the, the husband or the boyfriend or whatever, but it's right. true relationships with your children, with your parents, with your co-workers, right? right? And the primary one is with yourself. That's where everything comes from, right? There's some famous uh, uh, scriptural text says, love others as you love yourself. So it's got to start here. But then, yes, it does go into co-workers and friends and neighbors and your, your employees. Um, every, I mean, life is a relationship from one person to another. And it starts with how you can relate to yourself, because if that's messed up and all, you know, 
then it's hard to really connect deeply with others and build a business or, or a marriage or whatever it might be. And I think that's important. And I do business assessments with people all the time where you can tell there's something going on yeah, in their life yeah. and, and they're, they're trying to be productive and they're trying to move mm -hmm. forward and they're trying to make a difference, but they're kind of like a hamster on one of those wheels because they're never going to reach their destination or their goal until they mm -hmm. fix the, the challenge. And I, I know that personally as an employer, I've had people that have worked with me that when they're, when they're in a good relationship, when things are going in the right place, they are just rock stars. Mm -hmm. And then when they're not, it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it brings down the entire office. Right. It bring down, brings everything down. So it's a drag that we're human beings, and we just can't block everything out. <laughs> but and you know, one day we'll figure, <laughs> technology will no, figure out how to do we that. We men eventually. know how to do that. It's not necessarily healthy. <laughs> well, talk to me a little bit about what are some healthy, like what are some emotional triggers that make us a hot mess, and then what are some healthy ways to deal with that? Well, if I was speaking mostly to women. Relationship triggers that happen with the feminine are usually around the things that she loves the most. And that's usually around either her intimate partner or her children or her closest friends, family, siblings. So when that kind of gets sideways, it seems to mess up her whole equilibrium. Um, and so triggers can come from any which direction. And I think the main thing really to talk about is to really identify. <laughs> Every one of you out there, if you can identify, like, what do you do when you, when you go in the tank emotionally? What's your, what's your approach? And I, there's basically five things people do when they're a mess. And Eat. Well, that's been my, I, I've learned that, that a lot in the last few years. That, like, that would be under the category of medication. You turn to alcohol or drugs or food or shopping um, as a way to medicate or numb yourself or make yourself feel good. You know. Um, anything that it, it gets you away from what you're actually feeling, you know, it just just you know just medicates you in some way. So that's one way. Distraction is another way. You know, we can do anything from turn the TV on to surf on the internet, go on Facebook, pick up the phone. You know, anything to I don't want to feel what I'm feeling, so distract myself or medicate myself. If you're into personal development out there, one of the best ways that and this is one of I fall into is we analyze. Like, why do I feel this way? And we try to figure it all out. As, as if, if your husband just left you or your, or your boyfriend broke up with you, if you understood that, it would make you feel better. Right. And, and so, but anal analyzing is one of the things we do. Um, we blame. We can start, you know, it's their fault, I'm, and it, this is why I feel this way, and they did this to me, and those are, that's another way of staying away from your own feelings by kind of deflecting. And then we vent. Well, okay, we and blaming can be part of Call the girlfriend too. or a friend, just vent, 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 vent. But those are all ways of avoiding what's actually happening in your body. Okay. Those and are I the common ways. That creates negativity, that creates stress, that creates weight issues, that creates all sorts of dysfunction in your Absolutely. life by focusing on those things. So when you're feeling that way, when your husband leaves you or your child goes off to college or right. you're just you're you're feeling like you're in that rut, what do you recommend we do? You're right. telling me I can't eat chocolate anymore <laughs> when I'm stressed? No, it would I always tell people it would be so great if you could just have a box of cookies and you would never be depressed again the rest of your life. I mean, or have a few, have a few glasses of wine and you'll never, never feel fear or anxiety. But it just doesn't work that way. What happens is after you do your, whatever your go-to method is, the feelings come back and then you feel bad about what you did. So then you have this double whammy. Now I'm 10 pounds heavier and I'm still depressed. And then it just becomes a spiral. So what I suggest people do, I, I put them in five L's. It's like the five L way of dealing with yourself when you're a wreck. Okay. And it starts with the word locate. And what I mean by that is locate what you're feeling in your body. Because here's a lot of times what happens for people. People don't necessarily know what they actually feel. What I mean by that is very often, my experience with women, and I coach 75% of my clients are women, um, that sometimes when a woman is truly, really angry, it comes out, she's crying. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times you grew up in a household where it wasn't okay for little girls to get mad. It's okay if a girl cries or if she's scared. But a lot of times you grew up in an environment where anger is cut off from you and you don't have it. So some women actually cry when they're really angry. And you can't be emotionally healthy unless you know what it is you're actually feeling. Right? Okay? That's now, important. Right, Absolutely. Exactly. And men, we grew up in areas usually where it wasn't okay to be sad. For sure you can't be scared. So men have lots of anger. But a lot of times when a man's really angry, he might be sad or scared. So if you don't know what you really feel, then you can never be with the actual feeling and help it release and flow through your body. So that's why I say locate, because your body, the sensations in your body, they don't lie to you. 
you might have been conditioned not to be able to, I can't get mad. I have a client. She's a PhD in computer science at Univer of Oregon State. And she's 57 years old. And she said, I haven't been angry since I was six years old. Oh, wow. Right. And while well, she's a mess because it's all in there and so forth. And something happened with her father at that age. And she said, oh, my God, I can't get mad because I get the crap beat out of me. And she's suppressed it her whole entire life. And she's a mess. But the other day, she just said, I feel angry. And it was like a breakthrough for her to even admit it. Okay. So that's why I say in your body, your body stores energies in certain places. So if, if like for anger is usually in your neck, your shoulders, your jaw, and your fists. So if you grind your teeth a lot, you might have some suppressed anger. If you have chronic trouble with your neck, massage therapists will often say, a good one, when they massage certain people and they move certain energies, mm -hmm. they'll spontaneously start crying or or they'll feel angry because they're loosening up stuff that's trapped. Mm -hmm. So a good massage therapist can tell you stories about what happens when they touch people in places. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Right. So fear is in our belly, um, butterflies in our stomach. Um, sadness is usually in the heart and the throat and the, behind the eyes. I'm all choked up. I have a broken heart. So if you become intelligent about knowing what, where the sensations are, it gives you an idea. OK, maybe I'm not really angry because I feel a lot of pressure in my chest and my throat. So maybe I'm actually really sad right now. And that gives you a chance. So when I say locate, I mean go into your body, out of your head. And where are the sensations? Where am I feeling tight, cramped, pressure, hot, cold? So you're in your body. Then you can label, which is the second L. Okay. I feel, because I feel in my chest, I feel sad. Okay. Then the next step is the big one, because that's where we go off and we medicate or distract. And that, the third L is calling love, to love what you find, which means to actually breathe to the part of your body that's all racked up or whatever emotion it is. So you don't want to medicate it or distract or analyze it, but actually give breath. So if you feel a lot of nut, a knot in your stomach, like some of our other guests might be nervous about being up here, <laughs> I never get nervous. But, you're, you're a pro. <laughs> But you can actually breathe into that area and give it love. And just love it with some, some breath. The second thing that you can do that I recommend is you can actually give that energy in your body a voice. You can actually let that anger or let the sadness or fear actually make a sound and, and come through you. Because OK, it, now you're getting way too deep. Well, you got to dummy this up. Right. How would I do that? OK, I have anxiety. I have a fear of right. not being able to provide for my family. What would I do? Okay. So I would say, what do you feel like in your body? He said, I got this, uh, this knot in my stomach. And I would say, OK, well, step out of the way a bit and tell me, what does the knot, tell me about the knot in sound. Make a sound for me. And you actually might say something like, <laughs> expressing fear. Right. If you're sad, you might just bawl like a baby. Right. If you're angry, you might scream or get a pillow and beat the crap out of it. Okay? So in other words, you're making sound to allow, because all the energy wants to do in your body is simply be recognized and allow it to move to completion. So to love your own feelings is not to medicate them or distract yourself, but to breathe to them, let them make a sound, and then physically move your body to express them, okay? Like interpretive dance. So you can, curl, you can curl up in a little ball when you feel scared. You can go ahead and cry and heave if you're, if you're sad. You can... Um, Punch the crap out of your husband. Right. Or I was, <laughs> well, get a plastic bat at Toys R Us, and you have a plastic bat and a pillow so you don't harm anything, and you can move the anger in your right. body, right? So that's just a way to say, I feel this, and I'm acknowledging it, rather than I'm running away from it and avoiding it by sense. doing all those things. So it's locate, label, love your feelings, and the key, the key with loving is match it. So if okay. you have a little bit of anger, make a little sound. If you really mad, make a big sound. Um, the third one, then, is to look for the story. Like sometimes we have emotions that seem to come back and back and back, okay. and I'm depressed, and I can't get over it. It's not moving through my body. Okay. So if you have a, an emotion that seems to be stuck in your days or weeks or months, what that means is there's a story behind it keeping it going. Okay, so let's say I lost a client that didn't want to work with me, and it made me feel kind of sad. Mm -hmm. okay, so I could feel that in my body, and I could express it. If I feel bad about it for days or weeks, chances are there's a story behind it that says, I'm a failure, or I'm never going to grow my business, or it's never going to work out. So I got this thing. And as long as I think I'm a failure and it's never going to work for me, well, then I'll feel sad forever. Right. Right? So this is why people have chronic depression or chronic anxiety or something. There's a story back in the background that keeps it going. And they never look at the story and say, is that true? 
is that true that one person doesn't want to work with you? That means you're going to be a failure? So if you, can, if you can look at the story and just ask if it's actually true, because our minds create things that are just weird, right. then you, you let go of the story, and then the emotion begins to move. Okay? And then finally to wrap up, and we can take No, I love it. Questions. Absolutely. The last L is to listen. There are times when your feelings actually do want to give you some information. So like there's five major feelings. Anger, sadness, like the primary colors. Anger, sadness, fear, joy, or sexual feelings. Okay. Okay? And each one has a bunch of different words. Anger is frustration, annoyed, I'm irritated. There's a lot of different words for them. But anger usually means that something wants to be stopped, or something should be stopped. The illustration I use is, is I think people that care for plants and rose bushes, they cut away like the, the dead stuff. They destroy parts of it so it can grow more. And there's times in our lives where we need to cut away and destroy and stop things so that more love can flow. So if you're feeling a lot of anger sometimes, maybe something in your life needs to be put a stop to. Maybe, you know, there means a boundary needs to be drawn. And women sometimes have trouble with no boundaries and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Because to be a good little girl means you let people do whatever they want, which is a load of baloney. Right? Fear means something needs to be let go of. Uh, oh no, something needs to be known. When we're afraid, we don't know something. So if you're feeling a lot of chronic anxiety, you, you might need to be looking at, what is it that I need to discover? I have so many clients that are afraid of this and that. And I said, well, have you actually, have you asked your partner if they're having an affair? Well, no, I've never even said anything. Well, why don't you go find out? Instead of living in all the fear, go discover. <laughs> go ask a question. Maybe you'll find out you're not getting fired from your job if right. you were to ask somebody. So fear means there's something to be known. Sadness means there's something that needs to be let go of is sadness arises when we're trying to hold on to something in life that life says it's time for it to go. To let go. Right? Things are impermanent. Relationships come and go, jobs do, the economy does, money does, our bodies change. Things happen. If we try to hold on, there we can be a lot of sadness. So sadness can make us think, what am I trying to hold on to that I need to let go? Joy, something needs to be celebrated. And I think one of the best ones, sexual feelings mean something needs to be created. <laughs> Sexual energy is the energy of creation. Obviously in procreation, but so many people, they think their sexual energy is limited to sexual experience. And then if you're single, you're like, you feel all trapped because you don't want to just go with anybody. Um, but sexual energy is the energy behind all creation, whether it's in your business, whether it's art, music. So if you feel a lot of sexual energy in your body, you can really use that to fuel what you're doing. Whether it's building a WOMTech chapter or reaching out to clients, you can lose, lose a lot of that juice. Now, I don't, I don't live inside a woman's body, I live inside a man's body, but when I, when I see a beautiful woman, there's like a, whoa, man, she's, you know, and I'm happily married, but I see beautiful women and they affect me. I'm sure that's the same mm -hmm. for women. One of your guests was mentioning that um, uh, she, uh, the Wolverine guy. What's his name? Hugh Jackman. Yes. Hugh Jackman's on her list, she says. I'm, I'm totally outing her with that one. <laughs> but what that means is in her body, when she sees him, there's a juice there. Now, she could take that energy and move it in her body to fuel her business, to just give her a little bit more energy. Okay, so that means we need to take the poster of the thing that fuels your energy, and it needs to be, like, on your desk yeah. <laughs> somewhere. So, yeah. Jeff, sorry, I'm going to have to get a picture of Tim McGraw or something like that. I don't know <laughs> what to tell you, but um, I, I think that's awesome because you're using that to just, just – energy is everything. You know, energy yeah. is everything, right. and, and that's when you're dealing with negative energy. It's, it's not only going to bring down yourself, but it's going to mm -hmm. bring down everybody around you. Yeah. Now, if there's somebody here that's watching that is um, – like not excited about Valentine's Day, you know, approaching because right. there are lots of people that are in lots of different relationships or could yeah. be a nun or could be just getting out of one. If they're in a life change, um, what is the, the one thing that you would say to somebody that might be looking, you know, for that relationship? Um, is there a piece of advice that you find most common in the clients that you, you talk to? Are you mentioning like a, like a person who's single a that person doesn't have a Valentine? Right. Well, the easy answer is call me. That's what I do. I help people find that. Um, well, that's a complicated answer. But what I would say is, um, hmm, I guess the main thing that I would want someone to do is to be really clear on the kind of relationship they want. I, I call it making your own relationship vision. And it's this idea of writing, and, and it might be two or three pages long, writing down what the relationship you want to be like, what you want it to be like in, as if it's already happening. 
So sit down and describe, this is the way this man treats me. These are the qualities in his life that I adore. This is how we argue. This is how we manage money. This is how we communicate. This is my gift to him. So really sit down and, and kind of energetically feel it as if it's already there. Mm -hmm. And then commit and saying, God, I am not going to settle for less than this. I'm going to wait, and I'm going to trust that life is unfolding in the way it's supposed to. And when it's ready, when it happens, it'll happen. But I want to live with this prayer, with right. this kind of energy, that I'm ready for the right man, and I am not going to distract myself with kind of good decent guys okay so now I know you've consulted with lots of people and mm -hmm. you've like from teenagers you know, teenage boys that are you know in mm -hmm. bad relationships to you know like I said before you know older women mm -hmm. that that have been my oldest client has been 74 74 that's mm -hmm. awesome mm -hmm. that is awesome single looking for love at 74 that's that's terrific well my mom I gotta tell you she um, has a boyfriend now that's 83 that's so, so awesome. I know it's great to hear um, but if you're if somebody is watching and they're in a marriage and they've been married for 20 years and that you know life just happens as life happens and as kids grow things start to maybe fizzle a little bit right what advice would you have for them because I can imagine if a bunch of women are sitting here saying oh I just heard I need to write the list right. you know they're gonna write the list right. of everything that they don't like and that right. can't be healthy for a relationship right. so how do you embrace the things that are different as life has evolved and as people begin to change yeah and that's another huge topic I love these questions you're putting put it on me so um, what I would say to people that are in relationships is it's pretty easy to sit down with them and they'll tell you what are the problems. Mm -hmm. And I usually say, so then tell me what the real issue is. Because there's peripheral things. You know, we don't pay enough attention to each other or we seem to argue about money or something. And if you keep probing, there's a real issue in there that, that maybe has been glossed over and it's never being dealt with. So I would say, what's, what's the real thing? Maybe there's a lack of trust in, mm -hmm. in between someone and then you just start fighting about the little things right um, so it's kind of getting at, at that issue and then if both people actually recognize the issue and are willing to work on it then you've got a chance okay. um, so you got to have a willingness to say I want to work on this relationship and I want to work on, on the actual thing that's really happening instead of the peripheral things okay. I love it. I love it. Well, I know that we are um, blessed enough and privileged enough to know that you do will offer all of our WOMTEC members a 30-minute consultation. So if you're watching yes. today and you're trying to figure out how to deal with, you know, a child going off to college or how to deal with the death of a spouse or how to um, how to find love, you know, in all the right places, mm -hmm. um, if you want to connect with Roy. Um, Roy, what is your website address? It's real easy. Coaching with Roy. Dot com. Okay. Yeah, and a free 30-minute coaching session to anybody. And I, I think I'm going to give away a free book. Do we do that now? Um, we can do that now. I, I do want to mention that you can also connect with him via the WOMTEC Facebook page because yes. he is an active member on the WOMTEC Group Facebook page. And you can also do it via WOMTEC.com on the member directory. Um, just go into name and type in Roy, and I guarantee you he is the only member that will come up um, under the name Roy. So yes. um, you can find him easily. But he's also, you've published a book. So mm -hmm. I know you've got lots of educational information. I mm -hmm. love your e-newsletters that you put out. Mm -hmm. um, very, very valuable. Tell us about the book that you've published. Well, it's a, it's a book. It's kind of a self-help memoir book. So it's a story about how I went, because I had a, ter a terrible relationship history. So it's how I went from a lot of drama to being in a great relationship and how you can too. So it kind of tracks how to go from trouble into repairing it. Um, so the title of the book is called A Drink With Legs. So it's a play on words. Because what I discovered is I really had to have a woman to make me feel like a man. I had like a, an addiction that I needed her attention and her affection. And I think at the root of so many relationship problems is I need you to give me something. Mm -hmm. You got to fix something in me or heal something in me. And I need you, I need you, I need you. And that whole thing, well, that just creates all kinds of drama. So you have to be complete in yourself. That whole Jerry Maguire thing is mm -hmm. it's a cute movie, but it's dangerous. Right. So the book is how to get out of that mindset to be able to love love a person without requiring them to, you know, 
heal you in some way. I think that that's so important, and I see so many relationships that are exactly that way, where it's it's they they need that almost even um, misogynistic relationships where they're they're controlled into believing that they need that. And I think that that's great that you're helping people. And like I said, I know personally that he has helped many of our members, and um, you've got a lot to share. So the first three people to reach and get in touch with Roy, the first three people to either send go to his website coachingwithroy.com and send him an email, um, go to the Facebook page and tag him in a message saying. Roy, I liked your segment. I want to read your book. Um, he's giving away three books today and, again, free 30-minute coaching yeah, sessions to anybody. The first three people that send an address. Because okay. otherwise, I'm just like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Who are you? <laughs> that send an address. So, Roy, thank you so much for being here today. You're I greatly welcome. appreciate yeah. you. And um, great information. I know I didn't ask you a ton of questions, but that was because it was so – I was yeah. getting into it. I was really enjoying what you were sharing today. And if you want, if you want more, just call me. Just like, like this is the beginning of a conversation, not the end. Okay. And speaking of that, he will also be at, um, he's doing a breakout session at the Confident Woman Conference in um, April 24th and 25th, 2014. So um, please sign up for Roy's class. It's going to be a wonderful program. And it's not really exactly what you're talking about. It's actually to do with how to use video marketing to build and brand your business. So he will, I'm sure, answer any questions that you might yeah. have for him at that time. But on branding. Me and Diane are teaming up a professional branding, personal branding. So yeah, it's going to be really fun. That's awesome. A whole makeover kind of thing. That's awesome. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I look forward to hearing your breakout session and I'm um, seeing you at the Confident Women Conference. There. It takes a confident man to be around 300 other confident women at the Confident Women Conference. Um, again, it's April 24th and 25th. The 24th is a trade show. We have a magnificent sponsor with Motives Cosmetics that's coming down to sponsor the event. Um, but we are looking for vendors to participate in the trade show. And and as a vendor, um, it's $255. You get two $99 VIP tickets to attend the event. Um, on Thursday, the 24th, you get to attend from um, 10 to 3. And from 10 to 3 is the trade show. Then we have um, the luncheon. We've got four amazing keynote speakers, a phenomenal musical performance. It's going to be um, very, very exciting. So we look forward to that conference. The very next day, we have um, eight breakout sessions, 45-minute breakout sessions that will not only educate you, they will inspire you, they will motivate you, and they will help take your business to the next level. You know, as a teacher myself, I taught marketing and business courses for many years at a university, and as a teacher, I can tell you that I personally know that if we surround ourselves with people that are smarter, wiser, and more successful than you, you will continue to grow. If you surround yourself with people that aren't as smart, aren't as wise, and aren't as successful, you'll continue to teach. And there's nothing wrong with being a teacher, but I believe that if we... Um, just the, the dynamics that comes from being around positive, passionate, professional people that will just take you and lift you up to become the person that God intends you to be is, is, is absolutely huge. So I hope you join us at the Confident Women Conference. If you're just attending the luncheon and the trade show, it's only $49. If you attend both events, it's $99. And all of our VIP ticket holders get to attend our VIP social night. So um, we encourage you to come on out and, and mix and mingle with people from all over the USA at, at our national conference, April 23rd. 24th and 25th. So now I have another guest that I want to bring to you that's going to not only help us build positive relationships and fall in love with ourselves, but fall in love with our image. And I've learned a lot about the medical spa um, field in the past, well, five, six years. And we have um, aesthetic procedures and laser treatment people all across the United States. And I've learned so much, I wanted her to come and share a little bit about some of the things that you might not know about the profession and the difference between having a medical facial or um, having a spa facial. Because the two worlds are kind of joining and merging together. So please welcome Jennifer Calabrese from um, Winter Park Laser. So thank you, thank you, thank, thank you for you being for here today. Me. And you've been a member, gosh, for seven years, I think, right? Long time. And yes. you've attended a lot of the Confident Women Conferences. So yes. tell everybody, before you tell them who you are sure. and what you do, um, should they sign up for the Confident Women Conference? Is it a fun event? Yes, it is a very fun event. I highly recommend it. I think I've been to at least 10 of them. And you'll learn a lot and grow a lot. And if you have a vendor booth, it's an excellent opportunity. And if you just attend, you'll have a great time as well. Yay. Well, thank you. And I didn't tell her I was going to do that to her. So <laughs> that's a true answer on the spot. Um, Jennifer, tell everybody who you are and, and what you do for a living. Sure. Um, I'm Jennifer with Winter Park Laser, and I'm the managing director there. And I have been for about nine years. And we've been open for 10 years. And so we are a medical spa which offers cosmetic services um, that give alternatives to surgery but tend to have surgical results. 
so in a day spa setting. So it really merges the world of medical with that nice, pleasant day spa setting together. I think that's awesome. And I know that I um, just recently had a medical facial, and this is why I thought it was important to share with the other members that I have rosacea, and the doctor has prescribed something for my rosacea, but she talked about different things that I never would have known, and that at a normal facial, they they probably, well, I, no, I get facials all the time. Who am I kidding? <laughs> and they've never mentioned it before, so it, uh -huh. was very, it was very enlightening about, you know, fixing broken capillaries and how laser surgery can actually help that. And um, so tell everybody what, what is a laser treatment? What is laser surgery? And sure. you know who may come to you? What type of people would come to a, a medical spa? Sure. So um, I get men and women, primarily women. However, the amount of men that have come to us has increased by about 25% over the past two years, wow. which has been great. So it's becoming um, you know much more well known to men as well. And I tend to get um, people from all ages, but mainly between the ages of probably 35 to 50. I feel like a lot of women, um, we tend to sometimes lose our identities as we become mothers and we become wives and caretakers and we stop sort of looking at ourselves and we're always taking care of somebody else. So a common phrase that I hear is, you know, I just looked in the mirror one day and all of a sudden I look 10 years older than I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. And obviously it doesn't happen overnight, but you just, you know, you stop doing all the little things to yourself you used to do and, you know, maybe you haven't been to your dermatologist in a long time and so you've been buying all of your products and you know, makeup at the drugstore or you know you just haven't really done anything special for yourself and all it just tends life to happens. catch up. Yeah, life <laughs> happens. Now I, I can imagine that a lot of people go to you after a major life change happens in their life. So um, w would you agree with that? Sure, so um, very a really common um, reason for people to come to us unfortunately is divorce. Um, or a breakup, and then of course, you know, children leaving the house because they start to focus on themselves, you know, for the first time, and you put all your focus and energy into somebody else, you know, when you're young and you're single, obviously you take care of yourself, and then you kind of stop doing that. So they sort of have that aha moment and really want to, you know, put emphasis on themselves and look the way they did. And, you know, when you're confident, you not only feel better about yourself, but it affects the way you treat other people. Mm -hmm. It affects, you know, just sort of that whole vibe you give off and you're more positive, you know, in your career, in your relationships, with your family, when you feel better about yourself. I think that's important. And I would almost speculate that Roy would, um, since he was just our guest, and we were talking about taking time for yourself and, and loving yourself first before right. you can love anybody else, mm -hmm. that it probably would be wise that if you're somebody that is, is in a relationship challenge, don't wait until the divorce to take the time to feel better about yourself. You know, and get, get, the, get the help now because it will change the way you walk and the way you talk and, the, you know, your whole entire image. Roy, am I right? Would yes. you say that? Okay. So, so, so call a medical spa before you file for a divorce and let's just see if they can help you. It's very true. And, um, you know, also it's become really big in the dating world now. Everybody is dating online. And so you really put your picture out there before you even meet somebody. So your first impression can be everything. So, you know, I think everybody has, you know, kind of joked about like, what if you go to meet somebody and it was a picture from 10 years ago? Obviously, you want to look like your picture. So I have more people than ever, you know, coming in because they're doing online profiles for the first time or they're dating for the first time in 25 years. Um, and laser cosmetic treatments definitely do not have to be a scary thing. The technology um, over the past 10 years has increased so much and made it so easy to get procedures that really have no downtime. I mean, 80% of my clientele work. Um, I have probably 20% that are on TV. They can't have downtime. So we really work with people and try to do things to make them look and feel better about themselves. And it can be something as small as just removing a broken capillary or removing all of your sun damage. And it can be something as big as, you know, you want to remove a lot of fat or stretch marks in your stomach after your baby. And you can pretty much do anything with lasers now. I think that's awesome. You know, you touched base on something that, that is critical because you talked about social media and how, how people are dating online, they're seeing each other's profile online before they meet in person. I want to just take a moment and talk about that because I think it's critical that you keep in mind that if you're, you're, you're trying, to, you're marketing yourself and we can talk about loving yourself, we can talk about branding yourself, but because of social media and because of technology, people can videotape you at any moment. They can capture your photograph and upload it at, at any moment, you know, with, with or without your knowledge, really. And you need to remember that, you know, there was a time 
being how my husband is in the photography industry, that I used to inspect and approve everything that was uploaded on Facebook and everything had to be retouched the way I wanted it to retouch. You don't have control about that anymore. Right. So if you're not comfortable and confident with who you are, if that's not the brand that you want to communicate, that you've got to figure out a way to use the resources to meet the people, to create the brand that, that you want to, to create, that you want to imitate or, or, or appear as. Um, yeah. Would you agree with that? I would. 100% agree with that. I mean, I find a lot of, you know, business people and, you know, women, obviously they want to rely on, you know, what they're good at and, you know, their background and their experience. But the bottom line is you have to make a good impression and you can, you know, buy a nice dress or a nice new lipstick, but that's only temporary. But when you do things that make, you know, permanent and long-term changes in the way you look and therefore the way you feel about yourself, that's going to carry you into every day and that's why you know Botox is the number one cosmetic treatment in the world because it works it's quick it's easy and it makes a difference and that's why like one out of every 10 you know no it's sorry it's like eight out of every 10 people do Botox now well, because what, it's so talk easy. Talk to me about that because sure. I've thought I've thought about getting it mm -hmm. before and I and I haven't but what are the risk what are the fears because like my husband he's got this thing about Botox no your forehead will be ruined or it could cause you to go blind or like he's got these big phobias about Botox sure. what are the risks that are involved in something like sure. that? Sure so I think you know Botox words like Botox and chemical peels can be a daunting you know scary word and they're really not I mean both of those terms um, are the most tested treatments out there I mean Botox they've ran thousands and thousands of clinical trials and it's extremely safe a lot of people their big fear is it's a bacteria. And I always say, well, you eat cheese, you eat mushrooms, you know, those are fungus, you drink wine. All of that's fermented, all of that's bacteria. So it's extremely safe as long as you have it done by a medical professional, a physician's assistant, a nurse practitioner, or a doctor. And you're making sure that it is, you know, a Botox cosmetic um, and a real, you know, FDA approved botulin toxin. And as long as you're checking and doing your homework, there's really not a lot of risk involved. It's tiny insulin needles, so you don't really have risk of bruising. Um, there's no risk of paralysis or anything like that. And you just want to find, you know, you want to talk to whoever's doing your treatment beforehand and let them know you like a natural look and you don't want to be frozen. Or if you get your lips done, you don't want Lisa Rena lips. You know, I hear all the time, you know, these different celebrities and I don't want to look like Lisa Renna and I don't, you know, want to look like Bruce Jenner and you don't have to look like that. <laughs> um, those are celebrities. And if you and start getting too much done that you're starting to look like that, I think you need to call Roy because there's something that needs to be fixed. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, you know, those are surgical procedures mm -hmm. most of the time or they wanted to look like that. That's not how it has to be. And that's the beauty of, you know, lasers too is you're regenerating your own collagen and elastin and you're getting a long-term preventative effect as opposed to just doing something every now and then. So that's what's so great about them, and you can get a lot of instant gratification. People don't realize how much younger you look just by removing sun damage. Right, absolutely. You know, and everybody in Florida, it's funny because, you know, they're all like, oh, that's my freckles. Like, those aren't your freckles. Like, that's, that's sun damage. I always tell people, you weren't born with them. You got them from being in the sun. And you've actually gained most of your sun damage by the time you're 18. Wow. So people always say to me, well, I've worn sunscreen the past couple of years, you know, and they were like 45. I'm like, well, that's great. But they great. were bacon and crispy yeah. when they were 16. <laughs> yeah, I had the baby oil and yeah. the foil sign out. So <laughs> all of that damage is done, and now it's starting to show itself. So just doing things like pulse light lasers and photofacials can make people look 10 years younger instantly. That's awesome. Well, as I mentioned before, I know we do have medical spas uh, across the United States, mm -hmm. but you are located, um, where are you located and what's your website? Sure. So we are located in Winter Park, um, 1155 North Kentucky Avenue, and our website is winterparklaser.com. And, you know, if you don't live in the area, I always recommend just doing something to make yourself feel better about yourself, even if it's something like getting your hair done or getting a lipstick. But if you do want to find somebody that does what we do in your area, you know, please do your research. Make sure that they are a medical professional and find a good medical spa, plastic surgeon, or dermatologist. 
Okay, Thank I love you. that. I love that. And I love your tip because you do want to take the time to do something special for yourself. I think that, you know, if you don't take the time um, on a monthly or on a daily basis to, to say, hey, I'm important, I've got to take care of me, um, you're, you're going to beat yourself up eventually. You're going to run out of, if you're not filling your cup, you know, if you're not putting deposits in you, eventually you're not going to have anything else to give. You know, people are taking too many withdrawals from your life right. and it's going to deplete you. And I think that you're, you're, don't feel guilty about it because your children, they'll actually start to look up to it. They'll actually start to respect you a little bit more. They'll you're teaching them habits. It's you very know? true. And, you know, I, it frustrates me when, when women say, well, I'm not vain. You know, and it has nothing to do with vanity necessarily. It really is about taking care of yourself. And I have a lot of women that come in because they're like, my kids keep saying I look so angry all the time. Aww. You know, and I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want them to think I'm angry. And that's, you know, they want Botox for there because they're like, I just don't want them to think that. So, you know, and it's true. Like you said, it teaches them, you know, to take care of yourself. And it's just like a healthy diet you know, so that you're not overweight. You know, your skin is your largest organ. You have to take care of it just like you do your liver and, you know, your weight and your hair and everything else. So. That's awesome. Well, and I know that you are going to give away to somebody that is watching today. If you're watching online and you've, you've, you've said, hey, you know what, I've had a major life change happen, or I'm ready to make a major change happen, whatever it may be. If you have stretch marks that you want to have removed, if you want to take a look at whether or not laser surgery or laser treatments can be something beneficial to you, or if you have that wrinkle, see the wrinkle? I have that wrinkle. If you have that wrinkle and want to get rid of it, then um, I want to encourage you to reach out and get to know Jennifer. So it's Winter Park Laser. You can find her on the WOMTech directory. You can find her on the WOMTech group Facebook page, I believe, yes. And um, you can contact her directly at her corporate office at the at the website. But what I want to say to you is she's going to give away a hundred and fifty dollar gift certificate to the first person that reaches out and connects to her and says, hey, I saw you on WOMTech Live. I want to talk more. I want to get to know you a little bit better and um, find out more how we might be able to work together because I am ready to do something different, to feel better about myself and to feel good about who I are. I am, and I know that I'm important. So I think that's awesome. Thank you so very much for Thank being here for today. Thank you for having me. And this sharing. And we need to talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. We definitely need to talk. We can take care so, of that. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So again, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about why it's so important to take time to make yourself important and to take time to to care about yourself and to realize that it doesn't make you selfish it doesn't make you vain it, it makes you understand that you know if you've got something that's affecting your self-esteem if you've got something that's creating an insecurity in you you're not going to walk with as much confidence you're not going to talk with as much pride and you're not going to become the the person that you're destined to become because you've got something holding you back so whether or not you're you're facing February with something that's emotionally causing you anxiety anxiety or stress or sadness, or you've got something physically that's changing about you that you want to, to perfect, I want to just remind you that you are the most important asset to not only your family, but to your business. And without protecting that asset, you're opening yourself up for liabilities that, that can't, can't be corrected or can't be reached. So um, I've got another guest that we're going to bring to you in just a second, but right now we're going to take a very short break. So if you're new and you're watching today and you're not yet a WOMTech member, there are many benefits to being a member of WOMTech. Um, one is the fact that it is a category exclusive networking opportunity, but we are also a business building opportunity. I wanted to let you know that we have just brought on um, to our team Diane Thompson, an incredible business coach from Kansas City, Missouri, and she will be helping me do business assessments. One of the many benefits that you get with being a WOMTech member is you get a one hour annual assessment followed up with a business assessment report. So if you had a hard time getting on my schedule, 
scheduled because I think they're booking me like in April now. Um, know that we've just brought somebody else on board that is a magnificent coach consultant that will help you continue to reach your goals. But with WOMTEC, you're in business maybe for yourself, but you're absolutely not in business by yourself. It's our goal to help give you the education, give you the connections, and give you the opportunity to not only make the most out of your membership, but make the most in your business, which is important. So um, I have another guest that's going to be here today that, that was actually just here. Was it last month already? December. Okay, December. So just recently. But we brought her back because she had so much more to share with us. We decided to get her back on the schedule as quickly as possible so we can finish up her segment. But Deanna Piros is actually um, a, a WOMTEC member. And tell everybody, Deanna, who you are and what you do. I am Deanna Piros with Grab the Goods. I own this advertising display board company right here and took that over about three years ago. It is 15 years old and um, rebranded and did new logos and uh, actually just officially trademarked Grab the Goods. Yay! Yeah, awesome. very excited. This attorney here handled it. Oh, Susan <laughs> Mealy. We love Susan Mealy. Yeah, awesome. she's great. Well, good. Well, thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. back. And today we're going to focus on your marketing model, the five steps Absolutely. To, to success. So let's start by um, last segment. And if you didn't see the December show, I would encourage you to um, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our WOMTech channel on YouTube or um, go to WOMTech.com and click um, Entrepreneurial Education and you can see all of our business or all of our um, WOMTech live segments as well. But the December segment really focused on targeting, finding out your demographic. You know, so many people are just trying to find a client mm -hmm. that they're not really focused. Like Jennifer was just really good about saying, you know, my primary demographic is people between 35 and 50. Most of the time they're women and they're women who are going through major life changes. So she's identified who her target audience is. They're people in Central Florida because they have to come to her. And she's identified the age. She's identified the, the most prominent gender. And um, she's identified, you know, the life change. So mm -hmm. somebody that's just had a baby, somebody that's just going through a divorce, somebody, you know, that has a kid going off to college and is ready to say, hey, it's time for me to focus on me again. Um, so that's a very specific demographic, which is important. But what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk a little bit more about the marketing model that, that is behind. Yes. What do you do once you find that demographic? Absolutely. So we're talking about, we did the target last, last month, and now we're going to be looking at the benefits sought. So we're going to be a little bit Valentine-y today. And we already know that we're going to be targeting women when we sell this. OK. okay? Or very strange men. <laughs> <laughs> Whole nother topic. So the benefit sought, we need to determine that. What's the benefit in a bra that's lacy? And we got from Victoria's Secret. Is it to support? I doubt it for this one. This is more <laughs> about the marriage and your, pleasing your husband. Your next one would be a strapless bra. Okay. The benefit sought is that it's strapless and I can wear it for my evening gowns. Then we have our other bra that we have that the benefit sought is going to be that I can do multiple things with this. This one I can change the straps, etc. So can your product deliver? What is the benefit sought by the end user, by the consumer? What do they want from your product? So each one of these bras, I want something different but it's still the same target. We're all targeting women and a certain demographic, a certain age group. So we're looking at the benefits sought. I think that's really important because I think so many businesses, they either have a skill or they come up with a product or they come up with a service based upon their past experience mm -hmm. and they don't really think about, am I delivering what the consumer wants? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Because if you just create a bunch of policies, if you just create mm -hmm. a bunch of procedures and you're not taking the end consumer use in mind, mm -hmm. it you can gain a customer, but Absolutely. keeping them is going to be a challenge, you know. And, and can you deliver? Can you deliver what you want to promise? If you're a maid service, um, I need my house clean, but on what level are you going to deliver for me? So when you put yourself out there in the marketplace and you have a business and you have a service or you've got a product, you've got to be sure that you can deliver. For instance, this is a bark off. I have a chocolate lab right now that is going through a howling phase. And I need this to work. I need it to deliver. Right now, it's not working. It's not delivering for me. In fact, I think there's a short. I don't know what's wrong with it. But it's not curing the howling like I thought it was going to do. And this is a $65 piece of equipment. And it's not delivering. So my benefit sought is I need the dog to stop howling. I need this to prove itself. I need the neighbors to be happy with me. And they're not. So the product has got to deliver. So we also need to look at the benefit sought by the consumer what is it that I need from you and your product or your service? 
Okay, I think that's ter terrific. At. And you know, I think that once you identify what is it that what is it that they need, mm -hmm. and how am I going to fill that need? Because that's how a lot of great companies start. You know, mm -hmm. somebody decides this is a need in the marketplace. I'm going to fill this need in the marketplace, and then mm -hmm. the next thing you know, they get a patent and a trademark. You know, and mm -hmm. get everything wrapped up. So once you do those things, then what do you have to analyze before you just start marketing? Well, you also need to take a look at your competitive analysis, and this is very big. Even with Grab the Goods, I do not have a single competitor in this field. There are no other boards in the Central Florida area that do this. However, I have plenty of competition. I've got coupon books because we, we feature coupons here. I've got um, attorneys that advertise in major magazines, including Confident Women. So I do have competition, but I have to determine what's my niche in the marketplace. So when we look at your competitive analysis, here's an example. We all love pizza. So with Little Caesars, they, the benefit sought by the consumer here is that it's hot and ready, says it is. It's a product that delivers. When you go in there, you can get it and you can go. It's quick, it's easy. And the other thing that's the benefit sought for this is that it is five bucks. So, but when we're talking about our competitive analysis, there are so many pizza companies around the United States. You've got Pizza Hut, you've got Papa John's, you've got um, Little Caesars, but each of these have a different niche. Each of them appeal to the marketplace in a different way, but competitively, you've got to carve out your niche. So you could be a, a maid service company, you can be, um, a, a, like with Jennifer, you've got products that you can feature, but which one of these are going to deliver in a way that's competitive so that you carve it out. What we call that is kind of guerrilla warfare in the marketing place, is that we all might have a similar product, but what's going to differentiate us and make us competitive in this marketplace? So that's very important to know. You need to look at your assets. What do you have that your competitor does not have? What are your deficits? What can't I deliver? What, what am I not able to provide? Um, if you're, I brought up maid service earlier, if you've got a maid service company and you want to different your, differentiate yourself in the marketplace, how about let's, we're going to be the only green clean team. Mm -hmm. Or you're a home remodeler. I do green remodeling. We have, a, we have a Womp Tech member that does that and his whole theme is I do it in green. I want you to save your money. I want you to get free from the power companies and from the dependency. And this is how I can help you do it. And this is how I differentiate my business in the marketplace. I think that's huge. And, and then making sure that there's a long-term strategy for that, that it's not just a short-term um, niche that you're filling, but it's a long-term strategy that it's mm -hmm. something that's sustainable, that they're gonna, you're going to be able to do over and over and over Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Because I, I see that with a lot of our members, that mm -hmm. they, they may come out with a, I need to make money right now, so I'm going to come out with this product or service. Mm -hmm. And um, just the other day, somebody had a product service they were selling for $15. Mm -hmm. Well, they brought it to me, okay, mm -hmm. delivered it, collected their $15, and I, that is not a long-term sustainable solution because there's no way you can scale that to a large mm -hmm. degree and, and be profitable if, if you're making less than minimum wage. You know what I mean? You'd be better Absolutely. off going and getting a job making minimum wage mm -hmm. because you'll at least know that you have guaranteed income coming in, you know, consistently. Absolutely. So what are some other um, deficiencies that people might have in their business? Well, let's say that we're going to look at your deficits, meaning if you are a news talk radio station, which I used to look at radio, you have, when we were in, when I was the marketing director, one of our assets at the time was Dr. Laura. And Clear Channel bought her out. And then once she left, that now became a deficit. So how are we going to fill that deficit and now have a new asset? And that's when they picked up Neil Bortz. And this is, this is years ago. Now Neil Bortz is a well-known character. Clark Howard was another one. Clark Howard is now, he has his own television show. But he was a new product at the time. And that he had to come in and replace Dr. Lord. But he was a whole different talk radio. It was a different product. And he wound up becoming a great asset. But at the time, he was a deficit because he wasn't Dr. Laura. Absolutely. So when you think about what you do have to offer, you also need to think about what you don't have to offer. So um, 
you can make wise decisions. And I think that larger companies mm -hmm. or larger corporations, you know, they have employee meetings, team meetings, managerial mm -hmm. meetings, staff meetings. They have all of those things. And it forces you to collectively come together and kind of just brainstorm with one another mm -hmm. to where you're able to say, okay, this is our deficit. This is what we're losing. This is our competitive advantage. And you're, you're bringing minds together to do that. Solopreneurs, on the other hand, often get so stuck in their own little world that they're not seeing what other people might be able to see. They're not seeing what the customers may be feeling or how people might be reacting. So it's really important as a solopreneur out there Absolutely. to back up mm -hmm. and to reassess, not only on an annual basis, it's February now, you know, not only on a, what am I gonna do for 2014, but also to consistently do it on a monthly, on a quarterly, on a, on a you know, every six month basis, whatever it may be, so you can, you can continue to grow and reassess the situation. Absolutely, in fact, you need to be doing this marketing model all five Five steps you need to do this every six months when I was in radio this was our this was our six-month plan and this was about a 30 page report that we would go through and we would sit down and we would do every one of these pieces and we would define our target redefine our target uh, we would define our position in the marketplace so it's very important that you come back and take a look at your own product your own services I have to do it with grab the goods mm -hmm. in fact one of the things that I've learned with the business cards is that there's no call to action. If there's no reason for them to grab the cards, then they're not going to take it, and they're not. my advertisers are not going to feel like they're getting a benefit. So I'm now having to re-strategize ways that we can have trackable success, that we right. can prove to you, our advertiser, that you're getting the results, and I'm looking at taking it to the next level, having trackable ways to do it, implementing the QR codes, doing more things for our clients. So even I, with Grab the Goods, have to step back and say, okay, right now it's a one-dimensional company because you've got the cards and that's it. But let's take it to the next level. Let's create a website for Grab the Goods where it's more interactive and I can track that. So you do really have to take the time to do this every six months. How am I doing? What's, how am I in the marketplace? Am I being competitive? Am I actually delivering for my advertisers? So I have to look, am I actually delivering for you? I my advertiser. I think that's huge. And one of the things that I used to teach people in the photography industry was the importance of shopping your competition mm -hmm. or sending somebody out to mm -hmm. mystery shop your competition. And that's a good way that you can use your WOMTEC members to do this. And I've got, I've got a couple of really smart members that have said, Kathleen, I want you to come in and shop my competition. I'm not going to tell my staff that you're coming. Mm -hmm. And just the other day, I, they gave me a couple of treatments at, at this one location. Mm -hmm. I went in. I had a massage. I had a facial. I wrote up a huge report on this is what I experienced. These are the things that I would suggest. These are the modifications I would make. And it, 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 when you have somebody going in to look at the things that you become, you grow blinders on. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's something so simple as I heard Roy hand you his business card earlier saying, you know, tell me what you think about this business card. And we may mm -hmm. see something that can be a game changer for you mm -hmm. because you've just, you're so in it, you're so attached to it, you're not seeing something that can be so simple, you know, that, that it's just a modification. We, so, do grow, we do grow snow blind where we just lose sight of what we're actually presenting. I, I consulted with a client last week who does a great job with his marketing. He, he gets it, but he has not even taken a look at what his weaknesses are on his website. Things that a sing-songy presentation and his, his video monologue. These are things that you just don't even pay attention to because you think, I got this. Right. Well, no, no, you don't got this. This is probably a five-year-old website. Let's get back to this because this could be killing your business. Absolutely. I think that's huge. And I know that we wanted to talk quickly about um, positioning and branding, everything that we mm -hmm. say and everything we do. And we already spoke a little bit about, mm -hmm. you know, your image is your brand, your business cards are your brand. We've done lots of segments on that. But what are some of the things that you feel are the most important with, with having people fall in love with your brand? And, and with your business? Falling in love with your brand is, is really important because it is everything you do. It is everything you say. And it's got to be something that you're confident in. You've got to be confident in your look. You've got to be confident in your logo. You've got to be confident in your printing and your advertising. You've got you've to really wrap your, your arms around it and say, I love this. Mm -hmm. and, and I love Grab the Goods. It took me a while to get there because I had to change the name three times. Wow. And I had, to go, I, I had to go through about seven months worth of uh, graphic design work to get to where we are today. So until I got to that point, I wasn't confident in my brand. I wasn't confident in the presentation. I wasn't confident in marketing and putting, you know, putting the things together out in the marketplace. So it is very important that you love your brand and that you are confident 
in the promotions that you're about to do. Now, of course, two things you need to know about your advertising and your promotion. Once you get to that place where you know, you've defined your target, you know what the benefits are of your product, you've done your competitive analysis, now you've positioned and branded, now we need to talk about, all right, there are hundreds of ways to do marketing. Absolutely. Grab the goods is just one way. But you've got several ways through Womb Tech. You've got your business cards. You've got your magazine. You're doing several things. You've got your website. You've got your uh, blog page. You've got this Womb Tech Live. So you need to think about two things. When it comes to advertising and promotions, there are two ways to do it. There's a tactical way, and there's a strategic way. Both of them are different, meaning strategic is just short term. It's, it's seasonal. It could be an outdoor an event. It could be the Confident Woman Conference. Mm -hmm. That is a short-term advertising promotion. Now, a tactical one is something like Grab the Goods. It is a long-term plan. And when you do your advertising promotion, you need to be doing both. You need to be taking opportunities that are presented to you in terms of, can I do this tactical promotion? Can I do this strategic promotion? You know, there's, there's, a, there's a time for advertising basketball. And then there's a time for advertising hockey. So you need to be thinking about, is this tactical and is this going to be strategic? So what is going to be the best use of my dollars? And then always have a tactical plan. You've got to be in the marketplace for a long amount of time and plan on it. That's Stick awesome. with it. That's awesome. Well, I know that you, we're going to give away a presentation valued at $175. Absolutely. Is it the first person that reaches out to you, no matter where they're at in the United States? Or? Anyone can reach out today. Okay. Just send, send an email on the, on the page today, on the Facebook page, and just say, I want that. Okay. And so. we'll get that, or grab the goods, and we'll get this presentation over to you, either just in a, a, a Word document, or I'll send you the PowerPoint. Okay, that is awesome. And, and I know she's got a lot more knowledge to share with you, so thank you so much for being here today. Thanks. I'm sure we're going to have you back on again. Um, it was a pleasure to have you, you as a guest. You're very, very welcome. You know, well, I hope you, you took a little bit of information today, and I hope you take it back and, and do one thing, because you can educate yourself until you are the smartest human being in the world. But if you don't implement any of the education that you receive, you are not going to achieve success. I can tell you that um, I, I know that a lot of you may have listened to some of the things that Roy was talking about or some of the things that Jennifer was talking about or Deanna was talking about and a lot of it may feel overwhelming like I'm just one person how do I how do I take care of my husband and take care of my kids and run my business and, and, and deliver and do all of the things that we want to do if it's just me and take care of myself that may seem crazy to you but what you have to understand is if where there's a will there's a way and if you you get rid of the things like Roy said that that aren't needed in your life and focus on the things that are needed in your life you can get through it if you learn to delegate, not dismiss, but if you learn to bring people into your lives to help you accomplish the things that you're striving to accomplish, you can and will not only achieve your goal, but you can succeed past your goal and become even bigger and better than you could have ever imagined. So I believe in you. I know you can do it. I thank you for being here today. I hope you tune in live next month, the first Wednesday of every month. Join us on WOMTECH Live. Take care and God bless.